Hello there guys, another little story in the day, as you know, I was there. I was with Lee for 14 weeks. I knew him since I was 20 odd year old, uh, since I was a kid, and he was, but I never, we just had had the name of him a few times, I mean, just one of you know, because it wasn't my thing. I was just in trade and that, but uh, yeah, I had the fight with him, we ended up being best friends. So, of course, I, I did the fight, I told you, in the restaurant episode, in the, in the estimate, I knocked the leather on her, remand that I told you the last time. So I got, I got into run, remand on the nap, but before I went on remand, I was on the room with Lee Buffy. A cop had been at my house, had been a couple of flats I had. had been other people's houses for me, um, and they, they couldn't get out to start the way. So it's, Lee got this old van, he got it up around flat. It was an old an old white van, I, was like, like a, I can't remember the name of it now, like, like a Volkswagen looking thing, like a little, little, little van. So I'm in there, 24 stone, and he's 17, so he's driving off. So you're never going to see his and He had that jacket where I give to Shelley, he used to wear that jacket, it was fucking getting cold the weather so we goes in the, the clubs so we goes in the belmont which freddie beasy's passed away he was a great old character i loved him a bit he was like lovely lad he look after you and, that, and he had all the night clubs millionaire top top bloke lovely man so we went and seen him and he gives us a cuddle and everything then we go into the club so we went in the Havana. Teddy Dick went there doing these mad dancing he used to do all his dances and they used to like candy stack statin he loved that song he always used to dance to that with his hands up and do his cossack dance so he said, hey, big fan, I've half one of these. So he gave me this thing called a biscuit, put it in my mouth, it was an ecstasy tablet. Never had a drug in my life, apart from that bit of coke and that with him. That bit of crack, crack I was telling you all the other time. So I'm sat, sat there, I'm stood there, so at the bar, and I'm the fresh orange and that, and all right, just dancing about like this. The next minute, fucking, you know, I was just things, whoosh, whoosh, it was like they're a bit, they're a bit acidy, these tablets. Apparently they had a bit of smack in them. So I stood there, oh, what's going on? All of a sudden, instead of being like this, I'm like that, I'd slumped like cabbage. So I thought, I'm like, what's going on? But I thought, oh, I'm going to get filled in here. Lee's going to knock me out here. I'm getting a bit paranoid, obviously. The thing. I thought, well, I can't fight back because my hands were just, couldn't put my hands up, they were just gone. So I'm laid against the bar like this, and, and Peter, <laughs> Peter said he's going to fall over then. So Lee's, what are you doing, you big bastard? I thought, I don't know what I'm doing here. He said, it's, it's, it's the gear, it's the drugs, don't worry, it'll, it'll subside, don't worry. Anyway, I was there, it went on for about an hour. It's never going to end this. He went here, come on, you, grab brown money. And if he was ever going to be a liberty taker, he could have took it that night, and I couldn't have done nothing. He could have filled me in, he could have smashed me to pieces. I was completely gone, right? Completely catatonic. So he took me outside, got me to the van, and we went up to another pub, and he went in, and John Graham and all them were in there, lovely lads and all, John. All nice lads, you know, in them days. All could have a fight, and all shook hands if you got beat, all shook hands if you if you lost, but they never went on people's houses smashing windows. We didn't go around people's houses offering them up for fights and stuff. We'd meet them on field, like I said, or on the, on the, on the sands or in a car park, somewhere like that, away from the police, prying eyes, and no one ever got locked up. So, yeah, so, we're in, we're in, I'm, in I'm outside in the van, I'm, like, I'm starting to wake up a bit now, and a bit of music on the radio, and I'm tapping away, and I'm doing this. Oh, you come to life, are you big fella? So he gets in the van, drives around. Says, oh, we're going to see Flatty. Well, I knew Flatty because I worked the door with Flatty. Uh, Brian Flatty, lovely man. He's the one in my videos where you see me training. He helped me. I mean, I did 800 pound deadlift through him and 800 pound squats and that. And Paul Epstein seen me do it. And Kev Kilty seen me do it. All the people know him. I've seen me do it. Matt Davison, Chris Curry, and, and um, Mark Johnson, Ali Johnson. All seen me doing these mad lifts in the day in all these different gyms, all different prisons. So they, they were there, but um, I, we went in Brian's anyway, and Brian had a bottle of vodka. So you want to drink? Well, me and I didn't really drink, and Lee didn't really drink. So anyway, Brian, and we drank this bottle of vodka between us, and it was about three or four in the morning. So he said, we've got the blues. And I'm like, fucking hell, it never ends with it. <laughs> so we went to the blues, we are in the blues. And I'm half drunk, and but the ease keep you up, because it keeps you up higher. Anyway, Brian, come here. This is such a back end. This is, he just kept introducing me. He loved me, he did. He, was, he, was, he loved it because he had something with him. He said, for the first time, it was, it was me, him, and another lad. Up in this, up in the lads called Mark. I wouldn't say his second name. We were up, up stoked, and died over there. And he went, see this kid, he, he, he said, he died for you. He put his heart, on, heart right on the line for me. He said, first time, first, first in my life I've ever known I'm up against it against this man here. He's, he's just phenomenal. It's just speed, his strength. He's got. I ah, forget about the fight, and we're best of friends now. See, I'm just saying, you, 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 yeah, you're just a one-off big fella. Hundred percent. There was like thirty people at the table, all sitting there, all travellers and that. He liked the travellers, like. So anyway, we're back to the um, the um, the blues. 
So he's got me out there again, doing lifting cars up with t-shirts to be on because I used to cut your hands then because the bumpers then were metal and they were bolted on so you could pick the car up. You couldn't do now, you just pull the bumper off. And he had me picking cars up doing these lifts all the time and he, he was always having a bit of fun. Um, but I'd miss him. I mean, uh, yeah, there'll never be another Lee Duffy, never. The one off like Viv Graham, just uh, the legend he was. But uh, he'll never be forgotten either. And the people who make stories up about him, they're just made up. The stories I'm telling you are from the horse's mouth in the day when we ran about in 1991. And stories of people who were with Lee, who knew Lee and loved Lee. So you'll only get the truth out of me. So we'll keep listening and we'll speak to you again soon. Uh, God, rest, God, God bless your soul to the both guys, Lee Duff and Viv Graham. I love you both.